welcome to the relationship of Richard said of those who are watching us via internet. We thank you for being here today. Everybody say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And we are here teaching on the Holy Roman Empire Reborn Part 2. Now, we stated last week that the Holy Roman Empire was actually born, write this down, November 3rd, 2009. So we are seeing in Scripture the prophecies of the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire. Spoken of in Daniel and spoken of in the book of Revelation. And again, the Holy Roman Empire has already happened. And again, it was born on November 3rd, 2009. And this was the most prophetic prophecy ever fulfilled in our time. Especially for the last 2,000 years. And many people, especially people in the church, did not recognize that this was a prophetic thing that happened on November 3rd, 2009. And people were, again, amazed. And now we're seeing this prophecy coming to pass. So actually, this power, this world power, has been born. And we're going to show you what that means to us today. So it's a prophetic fulfillment. How many of you know even when Christ came, a lot of people did not recognize Christ when he came? Yep. Amen. I believe when he comes again, some people, some people may not recognize him again. Amen. But again, here's a prophetic thing that happened on 2009 that's going to be a power in the end of day that's going to usher in the Antichrist. And it's going to usher in the false prophet. Now, listen, <laughs> it's amazing how many have missed this prophecy in the Bible. Now, we now confirm, and we taught this last week, we confirmed it without a shadow of a doubt, that the Holy Roman Empire is already here. Amen. It's already here. Amen. So, now I, want to, I want, uh, now, I want to explain how that came to be. How did this Roman, Holy Roman Empire come into play? After World War II, the empires of Europe, how many of you know after that war, the big World war, in World War II, it was a devastating war. 50 million people died in that war. And after that war, Europe was basically in ashes. It was, a, it, it was, a, it was plundered under the Nazi, by the Nazi Germany. And Great Britain, France, and Italy, and all the big powers of Europe were reduced just about to nothing. They had nothing left just about. Amen. Now remember, these were the traditional powers that ran the world in those days. It was the United States, of course, was in there. Great Britain, Russia, and Europe. In Europe, what, run, what ran Europe was Germany, Russia, Italy, Great Britain. So again, these were the powers of those days. And again, Winston Churchill was, was, was a vital part of, of, of trying to emerge things together with the United States. Have you ever seen that picture of, 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 of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin, you know, sitting and, and, and trying to bring this whole thing to an order? They don't want, in other words, they, they got so tired of war that they all came together and said, let's find a way to stop another war. Okay? So they started something, write this down, they started that back in those days called something called the United States of Europe. They called the United States of Europe. And they urged everyone to be united and in one accord in Europe. And they will pray that this will succeed to bring peace. So in 1957, almost 10 years after the war, there was a treaty signed called the Treaty of Rome. And this also created what is called the common market, as we know today as a common market. And the first goal was an economic union and a political union. And all was set in the motions of these six nations. And it became very successful. Then it jumped to nine nations then to 10 nations, then to 12 nations, then 15 nations, 
and they kept on getting together. And by 1992, all the economic barriers were, were down. In other words, how many of you know back then, uh, it, it, was, it was hard. If you lived in Germany before all of this happened, and you wanted to trade something from Germany into France, you couldn't do it. So in other words, there was no trade in between countries. But now all of this was taken away. Now we can trade wherever we want. So it became like a, like a big market called the common market. In 1992, all the economic barriers were down, so, so you could raise crops in Germany and sell them in France, et cetera, et cetera. Success was coming to Europe. But the real leaders kind of didn't come to an agreement and they didn't follow through. So things were starting to get a little weary. And then they call another meeting at a place called Maastricht Holland and formed a new treaty called the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. And the goal of this treaty was to go from economic union to political union. Well, by 1999, they had the common money. Remember what happened in 1999? What happened in Europe with the common money? Remember, uh, you know, I was stationed in Europe, and I, 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 if, I was in, if I was in Germany, I had, I had, you know, German money. If I was in France, I had, you know, France. You know, if I was in Spain, I had, you know, Spanish money. And, 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 and every time I went to a country, I had to carry around with a calculator because I had to figure out the exchange of money. You know, my American money in Spain is different than Europe, but then in 1999, what happened? The Euro came into play. The Euro. So now everybody has a common money. All right? And by then, now, so the Euro European Union in 2004 expanded to, two to 25 members of this union. Now, these 25 nations have now merged their, the, the economy and adopted the euro and currency, and now all of a sudden there's 27 nations. Right now there's about 27 to 28 nations, and I say 20 to 27, 28, because one nation is still trying to get in. And, which is called, write this down, the European Union, which is basically the EU. The European Union. Everybody say European, European Union. Now, the European Union, believe it or not, became the Holy Roman Empire. Prophesied in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Now, so the European Union, in 2007, they became the number one world economic power, and they have over 500 million population as far as that power is concerned, with the greatest economic power on the face of the planet. Now, my point is showing you all of this, is to show that the European Union is actually, again, a picture of the Holy Roman Empire, out of which the false prophet and the Antichrist will soon emerge. Listen, uh, if you understand the European Union, the European Union decided in 1987 to print their own money and even a coin called the ECU. And the picture on this coin was who? Now, get ready for that picture that I have that, that, that go to the, the main page and where I show you, and you're going to see some of those pictures. They have a coin. And guess who they chose to put on that coin? Remember when the Roman Empire went away and the whole Roman Empire became into existence, they named the first pope that we mentioned last week. What was the name of the pope? Charlemagne. Right? So on that coin, they put the face of the first pope called Charlemagne. The first pope of the Catholic Church, Charlemagne. He was the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. So they basically made the coin with that face on that coin. And then they developed what is called even a Charlemagne 
prize for those countries who could bring unification to Europe. And in 2010, guess who won an award by the European Union and received the Charlemagne Award? President Clinton. President Clinton had been involved in the European nation and, you, and, and involved, if you think these people that are running for office are any good, you better be careful. Amen? Amen? And his wife is trying to run. And guess what? They're into all of this. They're into the Holy Roman Empire. Amen? So I will be very careful to get into all of that. All right? Now, so Clinton basically won this award. And basically, uh, you know, he stood in the cathedral. He actually stood in the cathedral to receive the award where Charlemagne, the first pope, was inaugurated as first pope. So everything that he was doing, he was right there when all this was beginning. The very birthplace of the Roman Empire, of the Holy Roman Empire, is where Clinton and these people have basically joined hands. By the way, there is even a, how many, how many of you have heard of, of, a, of a magazine called The Economist? This is part of the European Union. The European Union, let me tell you, the reason I'm saying this, right now the European Union just had a meeting. Right? They were discussing about Russia, what's going on in Russia, and they're coming out with NATO, and they're trying to find a plan to get rid of ISIS and all that stuff, Islamic extremists and all that stuff. And we're going to show you that that's, that that's all coming into play. All coming into play of the European Union. Okay? So they even have in that magazine, The Economist, a page where they show every month people that get awarded for the Charlemagne Award. And it's called the Charlemagne Page. So the European Union is all based on pagan worship. Now, it's being set up. Everything can say, every, say hey, it's being set up. Yeah. There, there's even a Charlemagne Boulevard. There's even a, a Charlemagne building. Wow. Nations are signing up. These people know that they are part of a rebirth. See, they know that they are part of a rebirth of the Roman Empire. They also have a, a flag. If you could uh, pull that, put that. No oh, you have no internet access. Okay, I tell you what. Um, I have a way to get around that. You try to reboot that box? Oh, yeah. You try to reboot it? Yeah. Just connect. Is that going? Let's see here. The reason why so I have um, Sorry for the delay. My, my internet, for some reason, the, the storm has probably cut it out a little bit. But anyway, let's go back to what I was saying. There is a coin that has the first pope on it. They also have a symbol in front of the EU building, and if you could pull that up. That is basically in the book of Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 12. <clears throat> I have a video that I'm going to play at the end that's going to show a lot of this stuff already. Okay? So they have a coin. They have the euro. 
They have, a, they have a statue in front of the European building in Brussels, Germany. I mean, uh, in Brussels, Belgium, I should say. And the statue, if you look at that statue, is a beast with a woman riding on it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. I saw, I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she carried, I mean, she cried out because of her labor pain and the agony of giving birth. Now, let me just stop there for a second. There's a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon and beneath her feet. All right, now, now, now just stay with me. This is the woman there that gives birth to a child with 12 stars about her head and understand that the person that basically did a symbol. There's another symbol that I don't have the internet to show you, but they also have a flag. And I think, um, you see the flag has, has 12 stars. But they actually have a flag with 12 stars, and they have a woman in the flag. Referring to Revelation chapter 12. Now, but the person who put the flag together came with this idea. Now, understand something, that the woman in chapter 12 is who? Wait a minute now, 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 let's watch this now. Now the woman in the dragon, this is the woman in the dragon now, that I went in heaven and a man of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Now the 12 stars were basically, who? The, the tribes of Israel. Right? And woman is Israel. So this is referring to Israel in Revelation chapter 12. But this person, who put this flag together because they're thinking Catholicism now. Wow. Okay? They saw that woman as Virgin Mary. <laughs> so they put 12 stars on their flag referring to Virgin Mary. Come on. And the 12 stars around her representing the 12 nations, the first 12 nations of the European Union. So Europe, well, watch this now, you might want to write this down. Europe is under the flag of the Virgin Mary and the Catholic Church. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's the way it is. So Europe is under the flag of the Virgin Mary and the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire. Now look, listen to me, how many of you were Catholics? I was a Catholic myself. Don't be offended. There's a lot of good Catholics. They don't even know why they're Catholics. Can I ask you something? What does the word Catholic mean? Universal. Universal, Universal right? What does the word Protestant mean? Protestant Catholic, right? Now who developed the Catholic Church? Constantine. Constantine. Constantine, Constantine. Constantine in 325 AD, didn't he? Yeah. Did God create the Catholic Church? No. 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 So is religion created by God? No. no. God created kingdoms. Yes. This kingdom. Yes. There's only one God and one kingdom. Yes. Religion, all it does is divide. Yes. But, the, but the Roman Catholic Church has become one of the most prominent religions of the world. Yes. And now they're running Europe. Yes. Amen? Amen. All right? So, this person, thinking this is the Virgin Mary, put the 12 stars and put the flag. So the flag over Europe is basically the Virgin Mary and the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire. And if you see that, they have 12 stars, and they have, it, look, look, they have 12 stars on everything. They have it on their license plates. Wow. Every member of the EU has it on their license plate. 12 stars on all the Euros. If you look at the Euro, it has 12 stars. And it's simple and that symbol of the 12 stars that they're using is not the symbol of the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. 
All right? It's basically an alliance of the whole Roman Empire and the political and the religion powers that are going to come into play in the last days. Now, they actually, in, 1920, uh, in 2004, October 29th, they actually signed a constitution of their own. They, now they have their own constitution. You know that. They have their own constitution. And they have over 27 members, and they signed the constitution, and they had a big ceremony on the constitution. I mean, it was a big thing, man. And so in November 3rd, 2009, basically, they completed the European Union, and it was born, and the identity is basically the power of the earth in the last days. And the Antichrist and the false prophet is coming out of this union. Mm -hmm. The European Union has a constitution, and America has theirs, much different. Yeah. But understand, the, the last member who signed in November 3rd, uh, 2009, those people who think that the Holy Roman Empire does not exist, anybody that, that thinks that that's been done with, you've got to be mistaken. It is going, that spirit of the Holy Roman Empire is the European Union today. They have a big surprise coming when they see the Antichrist coming out of there and the false prophet. So they have, they, in other words, there has been a reformation of the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire. So what does all this mean to you and me right now? Everybody say, what does it mean? What it means is that the prophecy of the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire is now completed in Revelation 17. Let's look at Revelation 17. Right? I'm not going to figure it into a scripture yet, because I'm going to set it up for you just a little bit. Okay? But here, Revelation 17 is going to show you again. So, if you look at verse 3, just to show you real quickly, okay? The angel took me into the spirit, into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and blasphemy against God were written all over it. What does that statue represent? A woman sitting on the beast. Same thing that described in Revelation 17. Everything is coming to pass, isn't it? Amen. All right, now watch this now. We're going to get into this. <laughs> so People are so amazed when they see this. We have a world government. How many of you know this? Okay, the European Union is developing what is called the One World Order. Okay? One governmental system. And that governmental system is pictured as a beast. Right. Having seven heads and ten horns. And it also shows the woman was a picture of, watch this now. Now that picture that, that, that the European Union has of the Catholic Roman Church is basically a picture of the Vatican. So in other words, they have a picture of the Vatican writing on Beep. 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 That's the picture they have right now. Is a reference to Revelation 17. Now, I'm going to show you some more pictures at the end. I wish I had that, that, that internet. It hasn't had come back up yet. No, sir. But, you know, it, it, there's a picture also that, that when they made that building, that building that you see back there, that building is actually is shaped as a Tower of Babel. The shape of the Tower of Babel. Revelation is coming to pass. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, so according to the whole Roman Empire, this prophecy, it clearly shows that out of the ten nation union, remember the ten horns symbol, there was ten toes in the foot, right? It said that the Antichrist will come among those and there will be another horn that will be uprooted, and three of those kings, come on, will be the man called the Antichrist. Out of the European Union. 
Now people are saying, wait a minute, I thought he was going to be a Muslim. We don't know how he's going to look like. I mean, there's a lot of Muslims in Europe. See, the Islam is running for their Mahdi, their false prophet. Remember, he's going to come into play. You, the, all I can tell you is this. I'm going with what the Bible says. The Bible says that he will come out of Europe. It's always been that way. Okay? Always been that way. In other words, so this is, again, a prophecy of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. And I'm going to go into my next teaching. Called the Antichrist and the False Prophet. Because it, it, I'm going to continue this with that. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Unbelievable, huh? Who says the Bible is just a book? And people say, well, it's just a story. Who's story? It's still the number one selling book in the world. Come on. This is God's inspired word written by 39 different secretaries. Amen. Because it was 39 men that God used to put the Bible together within a 1600 year span. But bottom line, it was just 39 different people that God used. But this is God's work. Amen? Amen. Okay, go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's see what this Antichrist <clears throat> is all about. <clears throat> Don't be easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Are you shaken? No. Don't be shaken. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation, or what is supposed to be from us. Don't be fooled by the way they say, for that day will not come until there is what? A great falling away or a great rebellion against God, tell me there is not a great rebellion against God right now. Huh? And every object of worship, he will even sit in the temple of God claiming that he himself is God. This is the Antichrist we're talking about, folks. Huh? Now, let's go to Matthew 24. Christ spoke about this. Matthew 24, 24. You dare say amen. amen. For, it says, this is Christ himself speaking. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, watch this now, even God's chosen ones. Huh? Even God's chosen ones. Amen? So God's going to fool God. This, this the false Messiah is going to fool God's people. Right? Let's go to Revelation 13 now. Back to Revelation. Revelation 13, verse 7. And the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. Uh oh, I don't like that. We don't conquer them. Wait a minute. So you need to tell me that this false Messiah is going to conquer some of God's people. Amen. Oh. Amen. I don't want to be one of those. Amen. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're from the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And people and language and nations. In other words, nobody was exempt. I don't care if you're from Uruguay, you're from Haiti, I don't care if you're from Ybor City, 
I don't care where you're from. You're going to be affected. Chile, Colombia, Puerto Rico, Cuba, even Santiago, Chile, and Santiago, Cuba, both of them. They are the ones whose name, watch this now, were not written in the book of life before the world was made. The book that belongs to the land who was slaughtered, right? Okay? Now, let's go to, let's go to verse 11, just to uh, Revelation 13, to Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast come out of the earth. Uh-oh. I'm out of the earth. That means that he's on the earth. Amen. The Antichrist is alive and well right now. He, he's behind somewhere. He's living in Europe somewhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right? He had two horns, like those of a lamb, but he spoke with the voice of a dragon. In other words, two horns, basically he was divided into, he was very deceiving. He would say one thing to make people feel really good, and then all of a sudden, remember, the devil to get you to believe a lie will always give you half truth. All right? Just understand that. The devil, listen to me. The voice of the devil and the voice of God sounds the same. That's right. Amen. Because the angel of light, remember he says he comes with an angel of light. Yeah. Yes. So how do you know it's God and how do you know it's, it's of the devil? Remember, when it's God is in the witnesses of two or three, you, you will get godly witness. Yes. Amen. Witness of God. I'm going to tell you something. How many of you have felt, oh, God told me to do this, and you did it, and it felt, you fell on your face, and it wasn't God at all? Amen. Come on, be honest. Right? It wasn't God. It was, it was emotions. It was, oh, I love him. And everybody says, sister, I, I don't, you better be careful with this guy. I will not. And everybody said, no, that's not good for you. Your mother told you that's not good for you. Your father told you that's not good for you. But you went ahead anyway. Because you said God told me. <laughs> and now, you, now you're now miserable and want to get a divorce. Come on now. Come on now. All right. Some people may say, yes, I married the Antichrist. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So watch, so watch this now. And, 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 and in verse 14, verse 14 says, and with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belonged to this world. He ordered the people to make great statue of the first beast who was actually fatally wounded and then came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to the statue so that it could speak. And the statue, the, I believe the next statue is going to be speaking too by running all over the place. Yeah. The statue of this beast commanded that anyone refusing to worship must die. Now let's jump this down to verse 18. Verse 18. Wisdom, everybody say wisdom. Say, say, I, want, I want you to repeat after me. Say wisdom, wisdom. is needed from God. God. Because God is saying wisdom is needed here. Right. Right. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast. For it is the number of man. And his number is 666. The Antichrist himself. Now, so this teaching, write this down. This teaching is about two men who will soon rule the world. We get into the, we get into that final part. Now, for my last segment, understand, we understood, understanding the end time, we learned that the Holy Roman Empire has been reborn. Everybody say amen. amen. We have also learned that the Holy Roman Empire has always been ruled by two main leaders. A political leader and a religious leader. Right? All right? The Bible, or the Torah, tells us that the end of time 
is going to be the Roman Holy Empire will rule again and they will be ruled by a political leader and a religious leader. Now the political leader will be called, write this down, the political leader will be the Antichrist. The political leader is the Antichrist. Okay? He's going to be calling the shots in the world. Alright? The political leader will be the call of the Antichrist. The religious leader will be the false prophet. So let's consider, let's go back, let's go back and just let's stay with one thing first. We're going to go to the Antichrist first. The Antichrist, I'm talking about the coming of one, this is, a, this is going to be a one world dictator who is without a doubt on the earth right now waiting in the wings yes. to be revealed. Right. People say, well, who's the Antichrist guy? You know, and I have some ideas who it is, but I'm not going to take it. Only for Christ. I'm take it. Not my Take a special offering with very good. No. <laughs> Just kidding. The Antichrist is called by many names in Scripture. Now let's call, let's, let's look at these names that he is called. He is called, of course, the Antichrist. Or the Antichrist. The Antichrist of the Antichrist. He is called the man of sin. He is also called the son of perdition. Of perdition. Perdition. What does perdition mean? Perdition means utter destruction. So he's a man of utter destruction. He's a man of total loss, eternal damnation, hell, waste, you name it. Perdition means all of that. Now, let's go back again to 2 Thessalonians again. 2 Thessalonians. Okay? 2 Thessalonians. Let's go back to chapter 2 again. Don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness. So the man of lawlessness is also the Antichrist. Alright? Everybody say lawlessness. lawlessness. And it says lawlessness is revealed. So again, the one who brings what? Destruction or perdition. Okay? So watch this. However, he's called by many other names. And we're going to look at this. Uh, uh, if you go to uh, verse 8 of chapter 2 of Thessalonians, the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will kill him and the breath of his mouth. Yes. Man. Yeah, my breath won't be bad. Don't ever have mints. And destroy him by the splendor of his coming. Alright? Come on, somebody. Amen. Now watch this now. So he's basically called a man of lawlessness, a man of the perdition, again, uh, or uh, when I say lawlessness, he's a man of Torah lessness. Okay? So in this passage, and others, we see the Antichrist referred to as that wicked, that wicked one. And then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. It says, then that wickedness should be revealed. The Antichrist is also known as the little horn. Write that down, the little horn. You find that in Daniel 7. Go to Daniel 7, so you see it for yourself. In Daniel. Daniel 7, verse 8. As I was looking at the horns, suddenly another small horn appeared among them. Three of the first horns were torn out by the roots to make room for it. Then the little horn had eyes like human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. So everybody say the Antichrist yeah. is going to have a big mouth. <laughs> In other words, he's gonna, he's gonna, look, when he talks, people will listen. All right? Okay? All right? So, it's known as the little horn. Now, if you skip to Daniel 7, 21, as I watched, this horn was waging war against what? 
God's holy people and defeating them. So this Antichrist is going after God's people. And defeat them. So in other words, this little horn is going to be war against the saints until the Ancient of Days come. Who's the Ancient of Days? Yeshua Messiah. Right? So this also states that these horn. Listen to me. Okay, now let, let me explain something. If you believe in preacher of rapture, this scripture just told you there is no such thing. <laughs> okay? Because if there is preacher of rapture, and his antichrist is going to come and make war against God's people, if we've been raptured, who is the people he's making war against? The man. Yes. Right. Hello? Yes. Don't believe in that. That's left behind. You, you believe in that, you'll be left behind. Right. That's not a true story. All right, left behind is fiction. It's not biblically based. The reason they make a lot of money and they sell that because they make a lot of money. Yeah. If you don't believe, what would you rather believe? That might be taking that one. And then the little thing comes up, boop, I'm going to be, I mean, like, like Star Trek. Give me a boop, beam me. <laughs> You're going to be beamed up? I don't think so. I don't think so. The church has to go through a test. Yeah. And for three and a half years, you're going to go through a test. Yeah. The seven years tribulation, the first three and a half years, the church will go through a test. Amen? That's when this Antichrist is going to do all this stuff. You're going to see it. Amen? So right there it shows you there's no pre-trib rapture. That's right. Everybody see it? Amen. Okay? All right. If, if, if the saints or God people are going to be at war, watch this now. We're going to be at war. So we're going to be at war. With the Antichrist, think about it. If we're going to be at war, there is no pre-trib rapture. Also, this passage says that the little horn is the Antichrist because that's exactly what the Bible says. And in fact, it says it here, and it says it in many other passages. The Antichrist is going to do many things. Now, let's go back to Revelation again. I'm going to go back and forth. You can figure in Daniel. We might go back to Daniel again. I thought you go in the Bible, you go back and forth. You just don't read one little thing. You got you to, I read the whole Bible. The whole thing. Alright? Revelation 13, verse 4. They worship the dragon for giving the beast such power. And they also worship the beast who is as great as the beast. And they exclaim, who is able to fight against him? Verse 5, then the beast was allowed to speak, watch this now, I mean, he has a big, a big mouth, yeah. mm. to speak great blasphemy against God. And he was given authority to do whatever he wanted to do for what? 42 months. Uh, how long? 42 months. 42 months. Right? 42 months is what? Three and a half years. Three and a half years, people. The first three and a half years, that thing is going to be messing up with the church. I believe it's already messing with it already. Okay? So, 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 so this is again very, very, very clear. The Antichrist is referred to also, write this down, as the beast. So we have learned previously that a beast in Bible prophecy represents what? Not just a man, but a kingdom. A right down kingdom. Or a nation. Or a system. So when we refer to the beast, it could be kingdom, is a man, kingdom, nation, system. Now, this is important to remember because sometimes when we say beast, we are speaking about the world government of the, end, of the end times, and other times the beast is also referred to the ruler of that world government of the end times. 
So the Antichrist, the bottom line is talking about the Antichrist himself, okay? But the name we call, again, this dictator, the most common name is the Antichrist. Right? Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Eighteen. First John chapter two verse eighteen. It says, "Dear children, the last hour is here." I mean, when he refers to hour, it doesn't mean twenty, you know, twenty, 20 uh, you know, uh, you know, just one hour. Okay, all right, just not one hour. It means a short period of time. So how many of you know we are in a short period of time? Amen. So dear children, the last hour is here. In other words, we are in that last call. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. Everybody say amen? amen. So now, I have found many people make a statement that the term Antichrist is not even in the Bible. I've heard that. Well, Antichrist is not even in the Bible. People say you know, things that I can't believe what they say. They don't know the Bible. Well, that's not in the Bible. Antichrist, that's not in the Bible. I'm not King James out. I'm not King James out. All right? Well, it says right here, how many of you in, in your Bible have Antichrist? Raise your hand. Do you have Antichrist? Raise your hand. <laughs> Those people don't know what they're talking about, right? But I have heard people say there is not in the Bible. Some people, there's believers that don't believe it doesn't help. Yes, yes, true. You know what? <laughs> and when they get there, they're going to go, oh, wow. You know. <laughs> Man, this place is hot. <laughs> and I hear, oh, I'm going to party with all my friends. And hey, yeah, you can party, all right? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So let, let's go on. Now, understand, John in this, in this passage understood that there was an individual ruler. John understood that there was an individual ruler called the Antichrist, and he even said that there are many Antichrists. Many. Now, why did John say? And how many of you know his name is not really in Hebrew? Johann. Johann is his name. Uh, say that. Why did he say that? Because there are many people, there are many people at that time, and even now, that they were claiming to be Antichrist. I've heard, okay, oh, I've heard some uh, stories. I remember Reagan was an Antichrist. I got, I got, I got people to prove that he's Antichrist. Uh, Bush, Obama, uh, uh, Prince, yeah, no, yeah, Prince Charles, Prince Charles, he's from Europe, you know. I believe the one time that, you know, he was the most, um, the, the best candidate that we could see. He's, he's a guy that, that is powerful, that basically hit in the scene, and this guy could be used by the devil. Anybody could be used by the devil, really, but I mean, somebody from Europe. So, I mean, he's a good candidate. We'll see. We'll see. Amen. All right, let's go to Daniel 7 again. Daniel. I got about five minutes. Well, how much time I got? How much time I got up there? 31 minutes. Well, that's not much time. I don't know how much time I'm at, do I? That's a lot. That's not a lot. Okay, Daniel 7. Daniel 7, verse 19. Daniel 1. Okay? Verse 19, Daniel 7. You there? Say amen. amen. Then, I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast. The one so different from the others and so terrifying. It had devoured and crushed its victims with iron teeth and bronze claws, trampling their remains beneath its feet. Verse 20, 
I also ask about the ten horn on the fourth beast head and the little horn that came up afterward and destroyed three of the other horns. This horn had seen greater than the others and it had human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. Okay? And so does Antichrist again have a big mouth, right? Okay. So here it says that the Antichrist is going to come up from where? The earth. From the earth, but from the ten horns. Right? And the ten horns we showed last week in our message that it came from the European Union or what? That prophecy of the statue of the Holy Roman Empire. Out of the Roman Holy Empire, it talks about the ten toes, right? So that means that it's coming out of that place, right? Okay? So it's coming out of the ten horns, and ten horns represents what? Kingdom or ten kings or an alliance of ten kings. Because we have already learned that the ten horns represents ten kings. We showed that already. So there will be ten kings, then the Antichrist will come from among the ten and uproot three. Right? Now, the question is, <laughs> from what ten kings is the Antichrist coming from? Huh? So when we refer to the ten kings of Daniel 7, we know that it's the same ten king found in Daniel chapter 2. Right? Let's go back to Daniel chapter 2. Give me your finger an eight. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 44. During the reign of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms, right? Right, so all 10 kingdoms are gonna be destroyed into nothingness, and it will stand forever. In other words, God's reign is gonna stand forever, right? So in verse 45, it says, that is the meaning of the rock come from the mountain. Remember, the rock is who? Yeshua, right, he's the rock of salvation, right? And he's going to come down and crush all, and just crush the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. Right? So he's going to crush. So in other words, these kids are going to come up. Yeah, they're going to come up. But God's going to take care of it. Amen. All right? God's going to take care of business. Now, so what we learn from this verse is that when Yeshua comes, he will smite the image of the seat. Come on. And the whole system of the world government and of human government when he comes down, right? Yes. Okay? But there is one more thing we have to know. The legs of his image were what? Oh, the leg of iron, which was what? The Roman Empire, right? Who ruled the world for what? 200 BC to 3 AD, 300 AD. Then the last segment of the image of Daniel represents the five world governments. The last segment of the image, five world governments that rule the world from what? 600 BC until the second coming of Christ. So the Holy Roman Empire has ruled really in reality from 600 BC until the coming of the Lord. So the iron, everybody say iron, iron. mingled with clay. Mingled with clay. So the feet and the toes is basically mingled with clay, which is the reference to the Holy Roman Empire, which has always been, come on, a reference from, in other words, if you look at this Holy Roman Empire, where did the Holy Roman Empire come from? Even the, even the Roman Empire, where did they come from? Where did they come from? Europe. Europe, yeah. So it's always referring to Europe, right? So the 10 toes, are iron mingled with clay, and so that means without a shadow of a doubt, listen to me, without a shadow of a doubt, this Antichrist is going to come from Europe. Right. That's right. It says right, right, it says, it says right here, in the days of these ten kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, and that shall never be destroyed, which is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So we know that the Antichrist comes from among the ten horns or ten kings. Or the Holy Roman Empire. Say absolute proof. Absolute proof. 
Is it the Bible's lying? Come on, it's not lying, but if you see everything going on right now. Amen. We have the European Union. Yes, and the woman sitting on the beast. Yeah. 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 Right. Come on. All's being set up. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Okay, let's look, let's look at this now real quickly. How, how, I got, how much time I got? You don't know how much time I got? 26. 26 minutes. Okay. Let's go to Revelation 13 again. Let's finish this tape. Revelation 13. You want to write this down. This section is divided into three, I mean this chapter is divided into three sections. When you read the Bible, sometimes you've got to read it in sections. Let's see a chapter. This chapter is divided into three sections. Verses 1 through 8 deals with the world government of the Antichrist and the Antichrist himself. Verses 11 through 15 deals with his religious partner and the false prophet. Verses 16 through 18 talks about there are one world economic system. In other words, this Bible or your Bible talks about the one world order. In your dollar bill, if you look at your dollar bill, in your back of your dollar bill, what do you have? Huh? No more order. One world order. Your dollar bill. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give that to my wife later. <laughs> well, you get it. Look. <laughs> you took everything out. So. Amen. All right, so, so. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's read Evolution. Let's go verse 1. Then I saw bees rising up out of the sea. Now, listen to me. For those who are here for the first time. Everybody say, I saw a bees rising out of the sea. 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 Now, you actually think that this bees is going to come out of the water. <laughs> the word sea in the Bible means what? People and groups of people. Right on. That's what it means. If, if you don't understand Hebrew, then you won't understand this verse. The word, in other words, in Hebrew writing, they use sometimes an analogy or metaphor. So basically, the word see represents people or groups of people. So it means that this beast is going to come out of the people. It has seven heads. What a lovely person, man, right? It has seven heads. <laughs> And ten horns. I'm pretty sure you met people with different personalities. Maybe not seven, maybe four or five. Maybe ten, you never know. It has seven heads and ten horns, I mean ten names, that blossomed God. The, this beast looked like a leopard. Watch this now. All right, we're going to go through that again. Leopard, but it had the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's stop there. All right? So remember, the beast represents what? The Antichrist. Does the beast represent? The Antichrist. A kingdom. kingdom. Number of kingdom. kingdom. It represents a man and nation, but it, now, now it's referring to a kingdom. Okay? The beast symbolizes the last days, right? Yeah. In other words, it symbolizes the last days world government. And its ruler. Every time you mention a world government, it has to have a ruler. Right? Okay. It will include most of the nations of the earth today. Right? Right? The reborn European nation. Or Holy Woman Empire, right? Which was reborn when? November 3rd, 2009. Right? 
Okay? It was rebirth again. Now, let's look at the beast again. The ten nation union is going to merge into the world governmental system. And remember, the beast had what? 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 Verse 2. The beast looked like a leopard. Underline leopard. Bear. And mouth of a lion. Right? Okay. So, bottom line, the leopard represents what? Germany. 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 European Union. Huh? The bear? Russia. 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 The lion? Great Britain. Great Britain. So it's telling you that this Antichrist is going to come out of Europe. Again. Huh? All right? Now, so Ten Horn is a unified kingdom, have merged into one single kingdom, which means one world government. Right here is telling you about one world government. Right? It's called, how many of you ever heard of globalization? That's what that is. Globalization. You hear it all the time. You hear it all the time from, from politics. Globalization. They're talking about world world government, bro. Now, it's important to know that the Antichrist is going to rule the world, one world government. So first of all, we know that the Antichrist is going to rule not only the world, but this one world government. The nations that are included in this world, world government are, again, Germany the leopard, Russia the bear, England, come on, the lion, and, and the ten nation alliance reborn from the Holy Roman Empire. Okay? All right? Now, the Antichrist, again, will rule for how long? Three and a half years. Three and a half years to 42 months, right? Daniel 7, 25. We read that, right? Now, we know that it's three and a half years because, watch this now. Even in Revelation 13, 5, it says, well, first of all, it says, and Daniel says, time, time, and half that time, right? In other words, time is one year, time, time, and half that time. And then, right? Which means three and a half years. In Revelation, it says 42 months. They just change a little bit. It means the same thing. Okay? So, now I know all of us will like to identify the Antichrist. I mean, we're going to know who that turkey is. Yeah. <laughs> all I can say is there will be a time when I will show you. Oh. Not now. But we got to wait till next time. Oh. I'm not going to give you everything at once. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to come back. <laughs> all right? Now. There will be a time when I show you, I'll show you. But I'm going to show you what to look for in the Antichrist. If this is the Antichrist, look, the Antichrist is going to do these specific things. If whatever person says the Antichrist doesn't do these things, he's not the Antichrist. Okay? All right? So let me show you what, what that is. It, it, it's a little bit. I'm going to finish it tonight. I'll finish it next week. Now, however, in my studies of just, when I study the book, uh, the Bible, especially my, the three books that I've been teaching from recently, uh, Revelation, Daniel, Thessalonians, you know, and I go back and forth to different scriptures. But watch this now. In that, write this down. In Daniel, Revelation, and 2 Thessalonians alone, those three books alone, we have 53 specific prophecies about the Antichrist. Amen. 53 different prophecies within those three books alone. Now, this man, the Antichrist, is absolutely alive on the earth right now. Mm -hmm. And all the prophecies that surround his rule are in fact coming to pass right now. A lot of them are coming to pass. A lot of them will start coming to pass. But a lot of them, out of those 53, have already come to pass. So let's learn something about the Antichrist. There has been debate. Some people think that the Antichrist class uh, will be a system, not actually a man. I don't believe that. Because the Bible tells me different. The Bible says in Daniel 7, verse 24, let's go back just to refer to that real quickly. 
Daniel 7, 24. Daniel 7, verse 24. If people say it's going to be a system, remember, it doesn't show you that in the Bible. Daniel 7, 24 said, it's ten horns, our ten kings, right? Don't say no nation. Kings who will rule that, that empire. So it will rule a kingdom. Right? Then another king will arise different from the other ten who will do three of them. So it shows me right here that it's, 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 it's again, and then it says he will defile, it said he, not the kingdom, but he will defile the most high. So this act is just going to be about a man going against the Messiah himself. Okay? So again, if I say he's a man. Yes. Right? So a king becomes obviously he is a man. The second thing is, so the first thing is the man. The second thing is that we know for sure that is that the Antichrist will confirm. Okay, so so wherever I say the first thing to look for an for, for the Antichrist. Yes. Say the first thing to look for an Antichrist. Yes. He's a man. Man. Second thing, say second thing, second is that the Antichrist will confirm the Abraham, the, in other words, the Abrahamic covenant, the covenant of Abraham, right? Right? In other words, the Antichrist is going to confirm the Abrahamic covenant, which is found where? Huh? Uh, well, first of all, let's look at what the prophecy said, Daniel 9, Daniel 9, 27. Daniel 9.27 says this. The ruler, right? What, what ruler? The Antichrist. The Antichrist. No. Will make a treaty with the people for a period of what? One set of seven. Right? Right? In other words, for seven years, the Antichrist is going to make a treaty. But, but after half of that time, three and a half years, right? He will put an end to the sacrifices and offering, which is going to be where? On the Temple Mount in Israel. And as a climax to all of his terrible deeds, he will set up a what? A sacrilegious object that causes desecration, which is called what? Abomination, desecration, right? Right? Until the faith decree for this the fire is finally poured out on him. In other words, God will take care of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, what covenant is he talking about? In other words, there's going to be a covenant in the last days that's going to be established. In other words, that covenant that we're going to look at, that treaty, that, that, that Antichrist is going to set up a treaty in, the, in, 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 in that first three and a half years, because right now, what is the biggest problem with Israel? That nobody recognizes Israel right. Right. to exist. Right. This Antichrist is going to actually put a treaty together to make Israel, come on, everybody's going to have to accept Israel. He's going to, he's going to, look, he's going to look like a real good guy. He's going to look like a real old man. This guy is bad, man. He, all these people try to try to put Israel together with the Arabs and they couldn't do it. And all of a sudden, this Antichrist said, well, bah, bah, bah. He did it. And what happens is, now Israel, once they become, again, acknowledged as a world system, as a state, even though they are, by God, but to the world they're not. The Arab world don't recognize them as a state. They don't, they don't even recognize them as the right to exist. So they're going to have the right to exist, but at the same time, they're going to set up the Temple Mount. That dome of the rock is going to go. They're going to set up the Temple Mount. Then you're going to be able to sacrifice him, yeah, which is a covenant yeah. found in, come on, Genesis, Genesis. go back to Genesis. Genesis, 15, that's right, Genesis 15, the covenant of Abraham, okay. Genesis 15, 18, right, which says what? Watch this. So the Lord made a covenant with Abraham that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants 
all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River, the land now occupied by the what? Canaanites, Canaanite, all the ites. Everybody say ite? Ite. All the ites, man. Even the socialite got in there. All right? So, bottom line, that, that, in other words, God, this, this Antichrist is going to set up again a treaty with the Holy Land. Yep. Right? Yep. And, and the covenant of the promised land. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, when this peace agreement is signed, which would acknowledge again Israel's right to exist, it will be signed, watch this, it will be signed with all the world community. In other words, everybody's going to be in agreement, and even the Palestinians, and the Arab nations are going to have to sign this treaty. Because yeah. this Antichrist ain't going to play games. He says, you are going to do it or else. Mm -hmm. He's going to have that much power. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist will somehow be involved. Now, I, I believe he's going to be involved in the signing. He may not be signing it himself, but he'll be involved in the signing, putting everybody together. Right? Now, because I, I believe one of the biggest, one of the biggest disputes right now is, 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 that, is that, again, uh, the Antichrist may not be out front. Sometimes the Antichrist, he may be putting everything together, but he's going to always be kind of like yeah. on the side. So he will always be the, the, the highlight of everything. Right. Because he's going to do that later. Yeah. He's going to come like a real nice guy, humble. Right. Thank you for allowing me to sign the priest treaty. He's going to be real humble. You know, That's, watch that, watch that, watch that. Yeah. All right, so the Bible says, that he will confirm the covenant with with what? With many for seven years, but half of that time yeah. he will break it. Okay? Now, the third thing. So the first thing is what? He's a man? The second thing is what? Huh? He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna confirm the what? Abraham. Covenant of Abraham. Then the third thing will watch Daniel 7, 24. Again, you're going to school over again. How many of you know you can't even get this about? Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> you can't even get this in ICTN. All right. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Daniel 7 is 10 horns of 10 kings who will rule that empire, then another king will rise. Different from the other ten who will subdue three of them. All right. Now, uh, uh, let's look at uh, Revelation 17. Revelation 17. Verse 12 again. Then the ten horns of the beast are the ten kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdom for one, watch this now, one brief moment to reign with the beast. Even though they're going to come into power, they're not going to do it for a long time. Right. They will all agree to give him, now watch this now, all these powers, all these nations, European nations, are going to give the Antichrist the authority to do whatever he wants. Okay? It's going to give him power, it, 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 they're going to agree to give him power, and the power. Mm -hmm. So that means even the, even the armies and all the, all, everything they have, the military power that they have, and the authority, the Antichrist is going to be ruling over them. Okay? Both of these passages specifically state that there will be ten nations, kingdoms, that will be the power base of the Antichrist or the European Union. So we are seeing several things that the Antichrist will have to do. And if he doesn't do these things, then he is not the Antichrist. If he doesn't do those three things right there, don't even think he's the Antichrist. Okay? So when you see it happen, because you will see it happen, you go, wow, man, there he is. There he is. And he, they say he's going to be good looking. You know, good looking. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be a good... Somebody that, that, you know, people are going to say, wow, I can see him being the armor side. Because he's going to claim to be God. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's going to plan to be God. So it's really, listen to me, it's really going to be tough misidentifying him when he comes to the forefront because he will fulfill every one of these prophecies. Without fail, he will do it. Trust me, write it down. You're going to see it happen. Furthermore, he will come among the ten kings. Now, I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to show you this next week.